we are here. Uh, welcome back, guys. If you have clicked on this video, it's because you want to know how did I buy my first rental property at 20 years old. Um, I watched a couple of these videos personally, um, but to be honest, no one posted a video telling someone how to buy their first rental property um, without setting aside ten to twenty thousand um, dollars I know some people really want to get into real estate but you know you're either a high school student wanting to get into real estate because you watch TikTok and you see all these multi-millionaires living this lavish lifestyle uh, raking in consistent income without putting the work in uh, or you know you have you have people that are you know college students wanting to get into it you have people you know single parents that are wanting to get into real estate so on and so forth you catch my drift and everyone does not have the means to set aside ten to twenty thousand dollars whether it's lack of income or uh, poor money management um, so I want to let you guys know how I bought my first rental property at 20 years old and it did not have ten to twenty thousand dollars behind it. Um, I was still in college at the time um, and I was not making a bunch of money. I was working at a car wash, um, you know, really just, you know, regular working kid, work during the day go to school at night, and I had some day classes, so a lot of my time was tied up in school um, because I was currently going to get my uh, HVAC uh, degree, and uh, so let me get into that. Um, I went to college to get my HVAC degree, uh, I minored in electrical because I wanted to also uh, have the capability to work on rental properties when I did acquire my own. Um, because what you don't have in cash, you kind of got to put sweat equity in, you know, or find someone you can partner with to really put the work in. Uh, you guys know what I'm saying. Um, but one way to actually purchase a rental property or get a rental property under contract so you can start making those payments um, is a thing called in-house financing, which some of you may have heard of. Now, you have heard of car buying where you have a buy here, pay here. And uh, I can touch in on that because, you know, other than rentals, which I am going to speak on on this video only, um, I do have a trucking business and I am in the car industry. Um, but this one right here, this house that I bought at 20 years old was in fact the in-house uh, financing deal, which, uh, I have right here some of the paperwork backing it. Um, it's called a vendor's lien deed, um, which example, just like if you were to do a buy here, pay here, what do they do? Say the car, they want four or five grand for the car. They say, come in, uh, bring us $1,500. That's gonna lock you in on that car, uh, make your payment every other week or once a month and uh, as soon as it's paid off, that's your car. Um, so it's basically the same thing with the house. It's just more paperwork, and um, you're not technically using this property to live in, which you could, um, I don't see why not, but this property, um, if you clicked on this video, is to get into um, investment properties, uh, rental properties. Um, and this house took about two grand down, um, we set up the contract um, and we uh, put down what my monthly payments would be and at 20 years old uh, you know on this specific property my monthly payment was set to $150 a month um, think about all the things you do with $150 a month you know if if you were to turn around and tell someone that you pay $150 a month for investment property, they would, you know, the first thing they would think of is, wow, that, that thing has to be a load of trash. You know, it's a trash property, the roof's probably falling in, it's probably destroyed, but that does not have to be the case. How you set up your financing can really, you know, make or break your deal, because if it's an investment property, um, 
you know, and you have a tenant, you get a tenant in that property and they're paying cash, you're gonna want them to at least cover the rent and the insurance and the property tax for sure. Um, or you'd wanna make money on it. You don't want someone in there paying and you're losing, right? Because, you know, if you're losing with your tenant, then you was putting out way more money than you can afford alone. Um, so how to do that? Um, so I'm pretty sure in, in many cities, you know, if you if you stay in a nice populated city, I can't I can't speak too much about country towns, um, but you know, in your more populated cities, uh, you're going to have, you know, a bunch of properties, okay? Um, they have houses that are being torn down. You have houses that are being built. You have some houses that aren't really bad, but they're not being, uh, no one's living in that property. And somebody owns that property, okay? So if something becomes like, uh, um, I'm trying to think, let me think, let me think. Um, say you have a house and you don't know what to do with it. It's kind of like, it's, it's just an eyesore and the house may be paid off. It may be paid off or they may owe money on it. But say that property's paid off, they retrieved it through, you know, maybe unfortunately a death in the family. Um, you find that property, you call them and you say, hey, you know, I'd rather not go through the bank. I can show you my income. You know, I can put money down on the property. And, you know, if we could, I'd like to set up, you know, for this many months and I can have the property paid off. They may, they may take you up on that uh, just because they'll look at it like, you know, I'm making money on this property. But, you know, which a lot of people would think, how would I keep these, this person from just taking the property away from me? You know, but that's where a vendor's lien or a vendor's lien deed comes in handy, which is, I mean, it's a contract, you know. And uh, if you are to break a, a legal binding contract, um, you know, you can go to court, you can sue, you can say, you know, this, this individual, you know, they openly broke a contract. Um, now that's dealing with a personal, like an individual, but um, if you're dealing with, say you're dealing with um, a company that owns multiple properties in an the area, they have a, you know, a really nice portfolio. If you go to them, you know, and you find out that, wow, not only do they have this property, but they have 50, 60, 70 other properties in the area. Look, um, I, am in, I am in a cash uh, strong position where I have the money to uh, make those monthly payments, you know, and you kind of let them know what your plan is. Um, everything does not have to be based off of credit alone. Um, and, and that's why I'm giving this example because not only did I not have ten to twenty thousand dollars, I did not have the cash worthiness to go to the bank to get finance to buy to purchase a property. So, so I would say step one is to you know look around in your local area, you know, start looking at properties that you like. Wow, okay, the grass has grown up over here. I see some busted out windows. You know, it's really like. Um, the videos you may watch on people talking about wholesale and real estate. Um, it's really pretty much the same order, but instead of you turning around to just, you know, dump a property off to make 10 to 20, you're gonna go blow, you know, and, and, and hop on TikTok and talk about how you make 20 grand in a week. You could be obtaining your own properties. Um, and I'm not a, you know, we're not in the business of, you know, flipping houses because of ways to make that same type of money off a of property without selling it. Because as soon as you sell it, it's gone. That's, you know, you made your money, that property's gone. You have some people say they'd rather do that because I don't want to manage a rental property. And that's fine. That's why you have property management companies. Um, so, you know, you know, we could get really deep right now, but this video is not to, you know, to, to get too deep you know, um, in future videos, I will speak on that. Um, the reason why I know what I do know is because um, I come from helping and watching a um, rental house business grow from one house to, to many houses. 
Um, and I just wanted to, you know, step aside and say, hey, I did not have the credit. I did not have ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to purchase this property cash. Um, I had uh, someone who uh, saw that I had a job, and uh, you know, truly believed that um, I can make this happen. And then I did have an individual vouch for me, um, which why it's really good to have good networking. Now, if you move somewhere and you are, you know, the only person, you have no one to vouch for you. That's still fine because at the end of the day, they're gonna wonder who are you and why you know I should believe you, and 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 all they can do is give you a chance, right? You put a couple thousand dollars down if you can you you can you know gather that together, let them know your plans, you know seek their guidance, and uh, you know as long as you're making those payments, um, you know that right there will be the start to you know building your own portfolio and getting into the rental game. Um, so uh, I will drop a picture of this property. Um, I am actually going to be switching this house over from cash to um, section eight. So I won't be dealing with cash tenants any longer. Um, it actually took me a couple cash tenants uh, to you know help that, that monthly income was helping continue to work on this property and getting it up to standard to get me closer to the point I am now to where I can start really getting it under Section 8. Um, again, that's another video. So if I left anything out in this video that you, you feel like uh, you'd really like to know, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Again, like I'm not a huge editor where I'm talking about some real estate stuff and I'm making buku money off of YouTube so I can feed you anything. I'm not gonna sell you a course, nothing like that. But um, I really just wanna start putting some knowledge out there. So I just really wanted to start reaching, uh, you know, larger crowds. Uh, you know, eventually I will start, you know, picking up some more toys and making more four-wheeler videos and boat videos and truck videos. But, you know, for a little while, I really want to tap into, into real life because we can sit here and watch all these people do all this fun stuff. But, you know, I'm more of a person of a how. How can I? My job is not doing what I needed to do or what I would want it to do. I want to do more. So, um, again, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to start dropping more videos, just straight knowledge. Um, so please like and subscribe, um, tell anybody you can to come to the channel because your likes and your subscriptions really helps me out to really see like, is this what they want to see? Because I will put this info out without selling anything. Uh, I am, I am the whistleblower. I'm not going to be holding no good information in. Uh, so again, thank you so much. Like, subscribe. Um, peace. You guys take it easy.